and welcome back to Between the Lines. This is Mon PJC. I'm here with the Blue Eyes Biker. Um, and this is my first ever bike review. It, it's a little bit noisy around here, so I'm hoping this is going to come out all okay. Um, we had the BMW R1250R and this is the 2022 bike. And I have this on loan. I've been riding this for a week now. It came off the forecourt with literally, well, less than five miles on the clock. So I've done everything on this so far. And I decided I'd take the opportunity to do a bit of a review on the bike and show you guys around and uh, tell you my thoughts on what I found. So the R1250 is obviously BMW's newer engine. It's got the 1250 uh, smart camshift technology on there, which has been uh, developed and is on all the Boxer engines. Uh, obviously you've got shaft drive. Uh, going through the brakes, got Brimbos front and back. On the front, I believe that's a 320 millimeter twin disc floating calipers. Uh, not sure on the diameter on the back, it's a single caliper. And they've actually got linked braking as well on these. This model is the SE, so there's a few little upgrades on here as well. Front and rear are 17 inch wheels. And these have come with the uh, Metzler, uh, uh, is it the Rotec tires, I believe it is? Yes, yeah, the Metzler tires, which are really nice. They're what I've actually put on my uh, 1200 GS. So the standard model is about 12, 15,000 pounds in the UK. Um, this is the SE, as I said. So obviously we've got ABS front and back, uh, traction control, six axis uh, capabilities on here as well. So that's with the ABS abilities that give you that cornering ABS and traction control. So it's all very, very smart. Um, this has got the ride height adjustments, different modes of uh, riding mode. So you've got rain, you've got road, you've got dynamic. There's dynamic pro on here as well. And also with the suspension, you can change that as well. So there's actually some sort of smart suspension modes on there as well. There's a dynamic suspension mode on here as well. So the SE comes with a few little extras, things like uh, heated grips. It's got the cradle already fitted for the uh, your sat nav or the new connective cradle that you can actually have fitted as well. The bike's actually also got this very nice, or the upgraded seat and the pillion seat. Already comes with the fixings for luggage on the back um, but this luggage rack on the back is also an upgrade as well the very very shiny uh, silver exhaust on here is also part of the SE upgrades and also so is the center sat stand um, to be honest I've not really used the center stand on this bike I mean it's obviously going to be very useful for doing things like uh, wheel changes and things like that if you want to do that sort of thing um, which also makes that very easy to do um, but I've just been using it on the side stand everywhere I go TFT screen on here um, you can get some other options like a, a fender guard that goes uh, engine guard that goes around there a little bit further it's obviously all in black as well this model various different colors but yeah that's sort of the general spec upside down forks is normal I think they're 42 or 52 millimeter. I can't remember exactly what ones they actually were. All LED lights. Um, from appearance, looks and view of the bike, I actually really like the way the, look like, the bike looks. The only thing I've, I've found that I don't like the look of is the, the headlight. It's, it's just not grown on me. And also the gold upside down forks are like the one thing that sort of stand out compared to the rest of the bike. Everything else is black and silver. And then you've got gold forks. I know this is the forks they actually buy, but I, so, so like, it doesn't match. Uh, to me, I would have had them in silver or black anachrones, something like that. Headlight is, um, it's got these LED segments in it as well. Turn it on in a minute, you can have a look at that and there is an option to get a little shield on the front there 
be honest, I've not really found it, found I've needed that. Bike's also keyless, so that's keyless on the ignition and also on the uh, petrol cap as well. So you don't need the key to actually open that. You just put the key in your pocket and off you go. Um, the only thing I did need to remember to do the other day when I was out was actually take, when I left my jacket with the bike, was to actually take my key with me because I'm obviously very easy end up leaving the key there with you as well. Okay, let's have a little look at the ignition. So it's just a, a click on there. This has still got the protective guard on the front, so I don't know how well this will show up. So you get the nice fancy little startup display. When the bike's cold, the uh, RPM limiter moves up. So I think it starts at about five or six, and then as the bike warms up, it will move all the way around to about nine. So that's your standard display. Air temperature, distance to go, all that sort of thing. Um, you've obviously got the uh, the magic widget wheel on the bike, as normal, and all the buttons and controls that you would normally find on a BMW. Uh, same on this side. Has got an SRS on it as well. I don't know whether it's connected up and fitted and working. Um, I'm not going to play with it and find out. So let's have a look at, through the TFT. So we use the menu button and we can go down and we're just using the widget wheel we've got uh, my bike info so we can see information on the bike petrol consumption you've got onboard computer trips got two of those and also tire pressure monitoring so coming out there we can also got this sports mode which when you go in there gives you a i think it's similar to the rr display so you can see your DTC, your braking, uh, your rev counter, and you've also got a little lean angle in there as well, because obviously we've got the six axis control. And going over one more, we've got navigation. So I've actually connected my phone to here. Uh, you can see by the little phone and battery down there. And you can go in and you can set new destinations and things like that. And the way it works is the little gadget up here shows you what you've got. You've got a music option, you've also got telephone, and there are also a whole load of settings you can go through as well. All the different display options, information, and you can also reset them all as well. So it's all fairly easy to use. There we go. So, next thing, what's it sound like? Um, Blue Eye Bikers over there in the background, setting her bike up. Trying to stay out of my way. So let's give it a start. Has that classic BMW got start sound? Very different on the exhaust compared to a 1200 GS. Different note that you get there. It's got really a nice deep tone to it. It's quite nice. noticeable from this bike compared to things like the 1200 GS that I've got as well is the the torque the movement you get on the engine when you actually give it a little blip so we're gonna hold the camera really still here and you can actually see the bike move when I flip the throttle so you definitely get that sort of movement of the bike from side to side as it actually does that yeah, so I guess the next thing is now, um, I'm going to go for a little ride. Blue Eye Bike is going to give me, get some pictures of me actually doing a little loop around here. And um, yeah, we'll take it out for a ride, see what it's like. Okay, so uh, started the bike up, moved the bike around, somewhere safe to start off from. Here we go. Let's see what it's like. Okay, so seating position. My knees are a little bit tucked up. It's not too bad though. Um, 
Oh, it's not too bad, yeah. The knee's tucked nicely under the, the tank. Um, I feel quite upright. Don't really feel like I've got too much trouble there. Handlebars are nice and positioned. Just nice ergonomics, I guess, whatever that's called. Oh, look at that. I come around here and I found, look at that, loads of traffic. This is what you get in Easter. So I'm 5 foot 11 and uh, foot down really easy. Both feet flat on the floor, no problem. Uh, Blue Eye Bike has also had a go at sitting on this as well and she's uh, 5 foot 9 I think. 5 foot 8, 5 foot 9 and she could flat foot quite easy as well. Did find the, um, the pecs get in the way a little bit down there with your legs. The box arranging people are always worried they're going to hit their knee on it, but I don't know what you can't dirt bike ride this. But yeah, really comfortable. Uh, initially, when I first got on the bike and I was riding it back, no problems at all. It's nice and comfortable. Um, I don't know whether this seat's a little bit softer because of um, the grade it is or the upgrade. I've really picked the wrong route to come down here today. Slow riding, there we go. A little bit of slow riding practice. First gear just trickling on the clutch. No problems at all. That is a very nice bike there. Yeah, so what am I doing? Like eight miles an hour clutch out first gear it's just ticking over no problems at all this bike also has a quick shift on it as well welcome to Letchworth on Easter there we go let's get going again Right, second gear, just nice and easy, no problems. I'm just going to pop down the middle of the, the town here. It's not noisy, it's not loud as a bike. There's nobody like turning their heads. So you can sort of like trickle through most of the time. Look, they don't even notice I'm there. Put it along nice and easily. So town riding, no problem, it's quite narrow, don't find it particularly wide as a bike. And the seat's quite roomy as well, I mean there's plenty of room to actually get pushed back as well. Actually get right, you can get right back on the seat as well, which is not too bad. Uh, normal everyday parking from drivers. Okay, let's go and give it a bit of a run. So, as I said so far, um, it's been nice and comfortable rides. Uh, we're coming up to a 60 here, so I'm just going to knock it down to second. But, uh, won't be able to open it up straight away. We've got a bend here. Let's feed it in. jump on the, the gear there then and I change the third up to fourth fifth six all on the quick shift no problems at all the airflow over the bike's quite smooth no real problems even in six gear when you roll off the front you get that torque of the engine pull you back acting a bit like a brake as we come down here into a 30 let's hear the gear change down absolutely smooth 
I do miss the double blip that I get on my uh, GS though, the whole boom boom as you go down the gears. I don't seem to get that on here. I don't know what you're saying I'm doing 34, I'm doing 28 down there. Mirrors are not too bad, I've got a reasonably decent view beside me, behind me. I, obviously my I've not ridden a huge amount of bikes but I mean it's still got pretty good suspension going over bumps like that I don't really have to get thrown out of my seat or anything so it's been really nice so we're gonna head out onto the A1 and uh, just see what it's like proper like motorway touring inspiring the engine in this it just keeps going and going and going it just doesn't want to stop when it's pulling away uh, the the quick shift technology the camshift technology kicks in at about five and a half thousand revs um, but normal riding I just don't even feel like you get anywhere close to that Brakes are really, really good. Front brake, nice and positive and sharp. Even the rear brake, I mean, it's not a massive brake, but it's still like, proper slows you down. I'm doing 30 in six gear, and you get a little bit of a fud fud but from the engine, but it's probably being a bit mean to it. But those gears are so smooth at changing, I'm confident enough to actually change gear going around bends. All right, let's go from here. Can't even get the throttle open. There's just so much more torque there available. So let's do from 60. No, I'm doing 60. I want to talk about it. Right, from 60 up to 70, what's it like in traffic from top gear? It's there, straight away. No hesitation. Top gear, there's just, even off the bottom of the, the power band in the engine, there's just loads of torque there. Makes the ride very smooth and comfortable. I'm getting no buffeting off the bike from the winds. Obviously you've got the wind all in your chest, there's no fairing on the front here. Mirrors are nice and stable. I did find that when the engines are revs, you do get a lot more vibration. So I'm gonna go down through some gears now. So fifth, no problem. Fourth gear, still nice and smooth at 70. Down to third, we've got that quick shift cam in now. Mirrors are nice and blurry. There's a proper vibration through the seat now. I don't think she'll go down to second at 70. But she probably will. Let's try her in second at 70. There we go. All the way up. Seven and a half thousand revs. Can't see anything out of here right now. It's amazing that you can get to 70 miles an hour in second gear on a motorbike. I'm stuck behind this Volvo, there's so much traffic around. Right, so motorway, not too bad. I will be completely honest, when I've ridden the bike for quite some time, 
I did start to get a bit numb in the bun. Starting to get a little bit wearing. But this is one of the things I really did like about the bike is it's just so nice to sort of like cruise through little villages, country lanes. Just make it effortless. I did try out the heated grips as well, they work really well. Um, I've got summer gloves on, on like on the high setting. You know, you almost get to a point where you can't hold them. They get so hot. Time to get to the speed limit again. engine braking but it's it's just so easy to ride and if this was a road you could overtake on it would be dead easy I have no hesitation about finding those gaps to overtake people on think that you're riding like a, a more sporty bike and the power it's got it's just just so easy to ride at these speeds just trick just trickles along I think this is one of those bikes that's like it's not like super growly screaming down the road or anything like that. It's um, a bit more of a like a refined rider, I think. Although I, I don't want to look right in levers on this, but you could certainly um, bop around on it. It's certainly got enough in it that you could have fun on it. fuel consumption on this bike pretty good as well um, so when I'm riding it a little bit harder country lanes sort of like bopping around got about 194 miles out of a tank of petrol 190 miles and then the last couple of days I've been sort of just changing up all the time sort of just proper cruising around and I've been getting about 100, uh, 220 miles out of a tank it reported so it's, it's very much a sort of holds a decent amount of petrol I mean, obviously petrol prices are quite a bit at the moment but but yeah it's got a decent range on it yeah so uh, nice little review of the bike uh, would I buy it it would definitely be a consideration. I think um, Blue Eye Biker quite likes it. Although she does complain about the peg sticking on her legs, which she got her feet down. So I'll just say to her, don't stop. That's the key thing. <laughs> 